In 1923, the year my husband, Prince Rainier, was born, his father, Prince Pierre, offered this theater as a home and sanctuary to a group of young dancers who had suddenly met with financial difficulties whilst creating a revolution in the ballet throughout Europe. The man who ran the company, Serge Diaghilev, came from Leningrad. Of course, when he was there, it was still St. Petersburg. Diaghilev's company, the Ballet Russe, included two other emigres from Leningrad, the dancer Nijinsky and the choreographer Fokin, both of whom graduated from the same ballet school. George Balanchine, another Russian, came to the Ballet Russe in 1924 on his way to start what is now the New York City Ballet and to create, in a large part, the tradition American ballet lovers have just cause to be proud of. Balanchine, too, graduated from the same school as Nijinsky and Fokin. The film you're going to see is about the children of Theatre Street in Leningrad. They are the protagonists. But as their predecessors have demonstrated, perhaps the greater protagonist is the school they go to. Let's discover together, shall we, what makes this possible. Most of all, we would like to thank the children for letting us tell their story, especially Alec Timushin, 13, Angelina Armiskaya, 11, and Lena Vorontsova, who will graduate this year. It was called the Imperial Ballet School of Russia in the age when the city was St. Petersburg. If the greatness of a school is measured by the greatness it produces, then it may be the greatest school of ballet of all time. Its children have grown up to change the course of ballet history. Anna Pavlova, Nijinsky, Balanchine. For over a hundred years, the street by which you enter here has been known throughout the world of dance as Theatre Street. Today, the city is Leningrad 
and the school is called the Vaganova Choreographic Institute, after the gifted Soviet teacher Agrippina Vaganova. It has maintained its reputation as a source of brilliant dancers throughout this century. Its recent graduates dominate the ballet, not only in the Soviet Union, but throughout the world. Today is the day of the entrance examination. Every year, thousands of children apply to study here. Twenty will be accepted. These children have come from all over the Soviet Union and beyond. Drawn by a love of ballet, by the worldwide reputation of the school, and by the dream of adding their names to the list of famous dancers who have been nurtured here. For the few who will be chosen, today is a turning point. To be a dancer in Russia means a chance for honor, for wider life, perhaps a place in history. The greatest dancers are privileged citizens and are idolized by the Russians. Most of these children have been recommended by their teachers or found by the leaders of youth groups. A few have never danced before. They're between nine and 12 years old. They come prepared to commit themselves to a life more intense and special than they can possibly hope to imagine. A life that will set them apart from the rest of the world for as long as they dance. The judges are looking for a dancer's body, one with long limbs, arched insteps, an unusual ability to turn out and elevate the leg, and for a light, strong jump. The children's bodies are judged against a mathematical index describing the ideal dancer. A computerized list of measurements predicts the proportion of the leg to the torso when the child is fully grown. Talent is considered worth measuring only when it occurs in the right body, and the index doesn't measure the child's desire to dance. For the parents as well as the children, this moment could change everything. If the children are accepted, they will have a chance that life offers to very few. They will also be totally separated from their parents for months, and in some cases, years at a time. Acceptance means sacrifices for everyone. Rejection means a dream ended, like the closing of a door. Euphoria, the chance to dance, the chance to fly. There's a deep inner glow at the core of every dancer. There's a joy in the simple beauty of movement, an exhilaration in mastering it. From now on, it will animate their lives.
It's a great honor for you to be allowed to study at the Vaganova Choreographic Institute. Now you begin. Now you will have to work and to study and to practice day after day. This is the only way to become a good dancer. Maybe someday you'll have the honor of joining the Leningrad Ballet. So far, so good. Now the going gets tricky. Oops. The longest journey begins with the first step. Every ballet class in the world begins with the exercises at the bar. And with this knee bend, the plie. The distribution of ballet slippers. Working as many as six hours a day, the students sometimes wear out a pair of slippers every week. Angelina is 11 years old. Her parents live 2,000 miles away and she's not seen them for over a year. Angelina has practiced these movements hundreds and hundreds of times. In the next six years, she will repeat them thousands of times. What makes it worth it is this.
The dancers are Galina Mesenseva and Konstantin Zaklinski. They are dancing the famous pas de deux from the second act of Swan Lake. Today they are the rising young stars of the Kirov Ballet. A few years ago they were students at the Vaganova School. This role is a touchstone for the young ballerina. Frequently, it is what makes her reputation. This is where all that effortless grace began. Only years of study and practice can make the ballet movements look unstudied and natural and perfectly confident. A good dancer learns to extend his leg faultlessly. A great dancer learns to do it without making faces. <laughs> Through over 200 years, no matter what wars or famines raged outside, the children of the Imperial Ballet School have been fed well and kept warm. From the beginning they were taught to read and write. Later they learned French and mathematics and how to play a musical instrument, subjects that were taught otherwise only to the children of the rich. Today they take the same academic classes as children everywhere. The children of Theatre Street are as careful about their weight as they are about the rest of their program. Every once in a while they dream about gorging themselves like the rest of us, but they know they'll only be able to do it when they retire in about 30 years. Alec and Angelina don't usually have a chance to eat together. They're on two different schedules. They both adore Lena. Lena's been chosen to dance a main role in the graduation performance at the Kirov. She'll have the pas de deux from Satinella. These are the girls who are about to graduate. 
The tall one in front is Michaela, Lena's special friend, who is here on a one-year scholarship from Czechoslovakia. Angelina watches Lena work whenever she can, and Vagonova watches them all. Russian dancers are famous for showing the world how the human animal can soar. A famous ballerina at the turn of the century tells of visiting the school and seeing one student who seemed to hang suspended in the air for seconds when he leaped. The teacher said, that's Nijinsky. The little devil never comes down in time with the music. A dancer's muscles become tense and cramped with fatigue. The students call Antonia Fesechko the comforting spirit. She asks Lena how the rehearsal is going for Satinella. For 40 years she has massaged the dancers of the school and the Kirov company. She also used to accompany them on their tours, including their last tour to the United States in 1964. All the great ones have felt the pressure of her hands, and Lena knows it. The memory of Vaganova and of the famous graduates is everywhere throughout the school, in classrooms, in the corridors, in hundreds of pictures like these of the early days. Vaganova, Vaganova, and again, Vaganova. The children are having a class on the history of the Russian ballet. The teacher speaks of Marius Petipa, the 19th century choreographer who made the force of what he created here felt throughout the world. He choreographed the Sleeping Beauty, Raimonda, Don Quixote, and scores of other ballets that are still performed today exactly as he envisaged them. Anna Pavlova, Diaghilev, Fokin, Nijinsky, and many others left Russia in the first decades of the century and became Russia's first cultural ambassadors. These brilliant Russians traveled to every continent in the world, electrifying audiences, starting ballet schools, stimulating a passion for dance that has grown ever since. The student finds most of the major graduates of the school honored here, although three, Nureyev, Makarova, and Baryshnikov, are absent from the walls. This is Dudinskaya. She was a prima ballerina with the Kirov and was considered to be the most technically perfect dancer of her day. The Russian ballet has a reputation for being fiercely conservative. This film shows Dudinskaya with her husband, Konstantin Sergeyev. They are dancing Raimonda. The film was made in the early 1960s.
And here I am. I made the film you just saw some years ago. I don't dance anymore. Instead, I teach and coach the graduating classes at the Vaganova School. I've been teaching here since 1951, the year Vaganova died. She was a great teacher, an innovator. I feel privileged to have studied with her. Dudinskaya's husband, Sergeyev, is artistic director of the school and a choreographer. He was a famous dancer, the first to dance the role of Romeo in Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet, which had its world premiere at the Kirov in 1940. This is how I ended the variation in Raimonda. This ballet was performed under my supervision at the Kirov. We still follow Petipa's choreography, not only in this ballet, but in Sleeping Beauty, Swan Lake, and many others. Sergeyev in Giselle. The historian of this museum, Madame Frangopolo, is herself a living ballet monument. Madame Frangopolo danced in Balanchine's youth ballet in 1922, having graduated from the school in his class the preceding year. After the October Revolution, there were many talented students at the school. There was George Balanchivadze, George Balanchine, as they call him today. Balanchine is founder of the American Ballet. He created a new genre, Ballet Miniature. Speaking of famous dancers produced by the Soviet Union, you have to mention Galina Sergeyevna Yulanova. She created a whole range of beautiful roles. She proved that a really great artist can combine all of the qualities of dance, physical, mental, and spiritual. Maria Yosevna Palceva has walked these halls for 40 years. Like Madame Francopolo, Palceva has become part of the fabric of the school. The dancers come and go, but Palceva remains, going from class to class with her purse and her old bag of music. Directing the class is Lydia Tiuntina, a gifted teacher of gifted dancers, herself an institution. In this room, other teachers like Tiuntina worked with students like Anna Pavlova, Galina Ulanova, and Tamara Katsavina, who was the first to dance Stravinsky's Firebird. Katsavina said that when she was admitted to the Theatre Street School, she felt the exhilaration of a young nun who has just taken her vows. Like the religious life, the life of a dancer requires devotion, an endless repetition of physical phrases, and a ritual striving for a level of perfection that is always out of reach.
Beethoven and Tchaikovsky seem in turn bored and wild at Alex's piano lesson. But Petipa is pleased. He was convinced that dancers should know how to play an instrument. Petipa lived in Russia for 40 years without learning Russian. He felt it would work out just as well to have the students learn French. French, after all, was usually spoken instead of Russian at the imperial court. And the terminology of ballet is French, since the first formal school of ballet was established at the court of Louis XIV. In 1847, when Petit Pa came to Russia, the French dominated the world of dance. It was largely his influence that brought Russian ballet into world prominence. This is Petit Pa. Petit Pa created the steps Lena is dancing. The ballet is Satinella, first performed in 1870 in St. Petersburg. In Russia, they use almost no ballet notation at all. Satinella has been preserved in memory by generations of teachers here, but it is totally unknown in the West. The rehearsal moves to the stage of the Kirov Theatre. Petipa worked in an age of ballets about princes and elves and fairies. But he brought to them an old-fashioned classical purity and demanded a level of technique that had been unknown in Russia before. Lena's partner, Lubomir Kapta, is also from Czechoslovakia. He will be dancing two important roles in the graduation performance. A male dancer is trained as a soloist and a partner. For his own performance, he needs strength and grace. To support the ballerina, he must also have an intuitive sense of timing and an infallible instinct for being exactly where he's needed at exactly the right moment. In another week or two, the seats beyond the footlights will be filled with the avid ballot domains of the Leningrad audience. <laughs> Lena's friend, Mikaela, won the 1976 International Ballet Competition at Lausanne, Switzerland. When she graduates, she has a scholarship to study in the United States. Mikaela is tall and large-boned for a dancer. 
but she has a very special fire and love of dancing that people sense right away when they watch her. Michaela is rehearsing the divertissement brillant. Divertissement means diversion. At the French court in the 17th century, ballets were not produced by themselves. Instead, they were diversions tucked into operas or masks. Later, a divertissement came to be a virtuoso set piece inserted into a ballet, whether it fit the story or not. The school dormitory is a 10-minute walk from Theatre Street. Stravinsky's Rite of Spring. This music caused a riot when it was first performed in Paris in 1913. It was considered shocking and ugly. This is a modern folk dance called Troika, choreographed to Stravinsky's music. Except for eight weeks each summer, these children live in the dormitory continuously for eight years. Some live too far from Leningrad to go home, even for vacation. They spend the summers at the school's camp on the Black Sea. Like most children so young and so far from home, they are strictly chaperoned. Oleg is telling Alec about a movie he's just seen. He says some gangsters robbed a bank, the police caught up with them and there was a terrific fight. Of course the police won in the end. Alec says that's the way things should be. And this is the way things are. This is a school meeting of the Pioneers, a youth organization offering sports, arts and crafts, nature law and ideology. This is a child's first step toward membership in the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. For the children of Theatre Street, discipline and obedience blend easily with gentle music. For them, it is the way things have always been. Today is the annual awards meeting. Alec is on it. Сегодня Новый год, 
Мы повторим с вами важнейшие государства мира. Государство социалистического лагеря, государство капиталистического лагеря. Today we are going to study the important governments of the world. Socialist governments and capitalist governments. We'll repeat the names of the capitals and the countries. And we'll show where they are on the globe. Alec Timushin, will you please point out some of the capitals? The world seems to be in a somewhat run-down condition. Столица Польши, Варшава, Франция, Франция, столица Франции, Париж, Соединенные Штаты Америки, Соединенные Штаты Америки, Соединенные Штаты Америки, столица Соединенных Штатов Америки, Вашингтон. Покажи, пожалуйста, Вашингтон. Leningrad was once the capital of another world, St. Petersburg, the city of Peter the Great. He planned this palace in 1715 to rival Versailles, more than 15 years before the first Russian child was trained in ballet. The children of Theatre Street are enjoying a day off. Я хочу сорвать с дерева апельсин. Господи, прошли все экзамены, кончились выпускные спектакли, и впереди целый месяц свободно. Я могу есть сколько хочу, пирожных и мороженого, но потом опять надо будет худеть. Да, жить здесь, конечно, в дворце замечательно, но это не для меня. Я предпочитаю жить в деревне. Но слабость моя в том, что я люблю огурцы и помидоры. Peter the Great was an intellectual czar who was brought up as a peasant, ate with his fingers and loved a practical joke. He had surprise fountains hidden in these gardens which shower you if you step on the right cobblestone. A dancer's body is her instrument. It can't be replaced. As long as she wants to dance, she must keep it in perfect tune. This scale has been here since imperial days. It says Fairbanks in Russian. It also says made in America. Nijinsky and Pavlova were subjected to it, and so is Lena. To keep the body in dancing trim takes more than willpower. It takes the lonely zeal of the long-distance runner. Zubkovskaya, a former star of the Kirov, says a dancer's life is a daily commitment to hard labor. Every day, a new effort to master the body. Breath control is important for maintaining stamina. Постепенно набирай, потянись, потянись, потянись и постепенно дуй, 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 дуй. Ballet is concerned with expanding natural limitations, with training the body to do what it cannot do naturally.
Graduation is getting nearer. Everyone's energy is focused on mental and physical preparation. In the 1700s, Russian dancers were often possessions of the nobility. Many children trained at the Imperial Ballet School were orphans. Others were simply given up by their parents and adopted by the Tsar. When the Tsar's ballet company proved to be entertaining, other noblemen decided to train dance companies of their own. Many of the dancers were serfs, and some were expected to work in the fields when they weren't rehearsing or performing. Ballet has flourished because whatever the outward condition, one thing has remained the same, the immense inner joy of the dancer. There is always the deep satisfaction of learning, of conquering, and of freeing oneself from an earthbound state. The reward of mastering a movement is unparalleled delight. There are 80 ballet teachers at the Vagan of the school. Some have retired as dancers, others are still active. Veniamin Zeman dances at the Mali Theatre in Leningrad. Not all the students will star at the Kirov or the Mali. A dancer who is not accepted by one of the great ballet companies may be sent to dance or teach in one of the distant republics or he may be instructed to join a folk dance troupe. This is Zubkovskaya. She believes that ballet requires greater strength, perseverance and moral fiber than any other art. It was not until the mid-19th century that ballerinas began to dance en pointe, on their toes. Today in Leningrad, most ballet preserves a 19th century flavor. But there's a controversial new ballet at the Mali. Yaroslavna. It's based on a Russian legend, the Song of Igor's Campaign, in which Prince Igor and his tribesmen are attacked by Mongols. Their defeat plunged Russia into despair and darkness for many years. The choreographer, Vinogradov, is a graduate of the school. As artistic director at the Mali, he attracts graduates from the school and Kirov company because of the opportunities he affords them for experimentation. 
so rare in the Soviet Union today. In the days of the Tsars, only the rich could afford theater tickets. They were so hard to get that subscriptions to the ballet were included in people's wills. Today it's still very hard to get seats, but not because they're expensive, only because they're in constant demand. The story of Igor's campaign has been told many times in opera and painting and literature, but it's always been seen as a tale of glorious heroism. In this retelling, war is clearly hell. The ballet is not even named after Igor the hero, but after his wife, Yaroslavna, who is represented as a tragic figure. Shostakovich had grave doubts about this ballet when Tyshenko began to work on it. He felt there were some subjects that simply couldn't be expressed through ballet. After he saw Yaroslavna staged, he changed his mind. Angelina has been waiting to hear how Lena liked Yaroslavna. Lena was fascinated and found it very well danced, but at the end she found terribly sad. Sadness really is not her mind tonight, however. She and Angelina are invited to a party by their teacher, Zubkovskaya. The famous Soviet dancer Yulanova has said ballet is the opposite of folk dance. Folk dance is simple and spontaneous and based on natural movements. Ballet is strictly disciplined and far from simple. loves attention. Come on, Romeo. Alec's friends break the mood. And to another Romeo, that of the Prokofiev Ballet, staged here by Vinogradov at the Mali.
Tamara Stutkin, the star of Yaroslavna, dances Juliet. Ordinarily, the boys and girls of the school stay out of each other's sleeping quarters, but tonight, Alec has gone over the wall. Alec pleads guilty with an explanation, but he knows what he did is forbidden. Да, делишки. Да, моя папа и мама из рабочей семьи. Прислала республика сюда. Да, бывает трудно, конечно. Охота все бросить. Но надо. Надо. Ну, когда получается, конечно, все время все хорошо. Да. Мама мне не хотела отпускать, потому что я один в семье. А папа говорил, что же за это за работа, когда танцевать, танцевать. Ну, вырастешь, окончишь училище, будешь танцевать, и все. А мне эта работа, например, нравится. И это очень трудно. Мне так кажется, очень трудно. The work of a dancer really is hard. His years of preparation are as long as any artist's, but his time to perform will be much shorter. A painter or a pianist may continue into his 80s. With rare and great exceptions, a dancer has about 20 years to dance. It's as if the children of the ballet live their lives at double time, with the demands of their vocation most intense while they're young. They make every second count.
As the night of the graduation performance approaches, nerves grow taut, tears are frequent. Mikaela will dance two solos at the graduation. Zagayev and the choreographer make no allowances. She is performing at the Kirov, and they expect the best. Надо вот этот центр надо почувствовать. А если ты почувствовал, тогда можно менять и руки, и эту, и ту, и ту, какую угодно. Все, что угодно. Мягче, мягче ножку подними. Вот такие интервалы. Понятно? Запомнишь, Ясен? Еще раз со вторым разом. Триам, пам, за вторым разом. Panic. Lubomir Kafka has been pushed as far as he can go and then pushed further. He has two crucial roles at graduation and he's never appeared at the Kirov before. He's saying, I simply can't do any more. I don't want to. I can't. I won't go on. <laughs> His second main role, that of a silence protest singer in Chile, is even more demanding. He rehearses despair with an extra conviction tonight. It's the night before graduation. The long preparation is over. What will be, will be. Like students on June nights all over the world, Mikaela and Lena talk about magazines, friendship, each other, and about the final test they face tomorrow. The girls can't sleep. It must be the light. It's the beginning of summer and of the legendary White Nights of Leningrad. For hundreds of years, it was the capital of all the Russias. It's the city of Pushkin, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, the scene of crime and punishment and of war and peace. Laced with canals, Leningrad is one of the world's most beautiful cities. It has often been called the Venice of the North. On the day of the performance, there's no rehearsal. Lena is going to visit her mother, who lives in one of the new suburbs of Leningrad.
All day, whatever she does, Lena is absorbed in the mental work of preparing herself for tonight. The graduation performance at last. Lena has made this trip a hundred times before, but today it is a new experience. This is the old Mariinsky Theater, which is, of course, better known today by its modern name, the Kirov. Lena has danced here as a student, playing children's parts, but tonight she faces the press and the public in her own right. The opening bars for the graduation performance will be played in less than an hour. Over a thousand people are on the staff of this theater. Tonight, all attention is focused on the graduating students. In front, the theater is filling quickly. These 19th century places are grand and very perishable. They're full of costumes and scenery, and when they were lit with gas lamps, they used to catch fire with unfortunate frequency. The Bolshoi burned in 1853. The Paris Opera caught fire 13 times. Tonight, there will be no excuses and no second chances. Standing in the wings before the plunge, Lena is charged with tension. she takes the stage, she is free. The fascination pas de deux from Satinella. Dancers say that when they're on stage, they exist on another plane. It's as if identity dissolved, liberating an inner self, both new and unpredictable. Backstage, Lena is watched by the others on the television screen.
stage, the drama's repeated. Other dancers battle stage fright, waiting to appear. To dance at the Kirov. Tonight, the dream is reality. Tonight we'll live in Angelina's dreams. She's losing Lena, and yet all her own work is carrying her toward the moment when she will be where Lena is tonight. For Lena, it's an unhappy triumph. She's disappointed with her performance. Michaela tells her that it was fine. She saw it backstage on the television. Lena says, old oh, television, it makes everything look different. <laughs> on stage, it's someone else's moment. The pas de deux from Talisman. All the days and weeks of rehearsal come together in this one performance. This is Tatiana Potkopaeva, not yet in the graduating class. She has talent beyond her years, and teachers predict for her a brilliant future.
It is the 238th graduation performance. As always, the Kirov is sold out. Graduations are as popular as professional nights. Everyone wants to be present at the debut of a possible rising star. The audience is adoring, but demanding. They follow ballet with passion and they understand what they see. Mikhaila is preparing for her entrance. Here is Lubomir in the interrupted song. It's an unconventional pop-oriented piece, very avant-garde for the Kirov, and especially for a student production. It's the ballet about the protest singer in Chile who was caught in silence by the military junta. Lubomir Kafka, who couldn't go on, has found that he could go on. to the reality of the Kirov world. This is Paquita, a perennial favorite with the Russian audience since the time it was first staged by Petipa in 1847. Paquita is danced at virtually every graduation performance. It is the perfect vehicle for classic 19th century ballet technique and a perfect example of the kind of production the Kirov audience loves. For Lena, Paquita is a second chance to prove herself.
mais quand il y en a un gain. Lena has completely regained her nerve. Now she has the audience in her hands. a new experience. They will have to learn not to shed tears at their curtain call. <laughs> Suddenly it's all over. After tonight, Mikhail will go to America to study, and from there back to Czechoslovakia. Lena will go on to dance with the Kirov. She's already been accepted. Lena Varonsova interpreted the pas de deux from Satinella in a broad and free style and handled the solo parts in Paquita very well. Alec is reading from Pravda. There's even a photograph of Lena.
Michaela and Lena are trying to avoid saying goodbye. They're pretending they will see each other again. Michaela promises to write from America. Lena's gone. For Angelina, another six years of training and effort lie ahead. She's on her way to the Mali theater to rehearse the part of a flying nymph in a production of La Sylphide. And at Theatre Street, the work of the children goes on. They're rehearsing the Waltz of the Flowers from Tchaikovsky's Sleeping Beauty. They've been invited to go with the Kirov Company to perform at the Bolshoi Theatre in Moscow. Year after year, they will practice here. Pursuing an art that is the legacy of another world and another time. They are different from other children and set apart. They have had and will have again the exhilaration of reaching through the difficult to achieve the beautiful. For the children of Theatre Street, it's the only life they know and the only life they care about. Редактор субтитров А.Семкин Корректор А.Егорова 